Just finished blow drying my hair. I'm gonna get started on my pre parting in a second. So I'm gonna show you guys everything I'm using. Braiding gel. I found this one. This is the braid formula super hold conditioning gel. I'm gonna be using a rat tail comb to part my hair. I have this braiding hair that I got from Amazon. It's 18 inches. I honestly don't know the brand, but I'll search it up for you guys and try to link it. I have four packs of these. This is the curly hair I'm gonna be using. It's from Y Wigs. I used this last time I did my hair, but this is the human hair bulk hair 22 inch natural coat natural color deep wave i also have my little hair rack i'm excited so let's get through this process i am expecting to take around three days to do this the parting is going to take me about three hours to do so i'm going to get started on that let me preface by saying this is not a tutorial i'm just walking y'all through the process of how i braid my hair so i always pre-part i think it saves a lot of time in the end and helps you stay in the flow of braiding So I parted horizontal for the majority of my hair and ended up with nine rows around the full perimeter of my head. And I didn't pre-part the top section of my hair. I just left it like this. And when I got to it, it ended up being around three or four rows. This is how I prepare the curly pieces. So I take a small amount of braiding gel and melt it between my fingers. And I like to taper the hair so that the curl spirals. So it's simple, I just pull the hair out on the blunt end of the curly hair and I section out pretty small pieces. On the right side of my mirror, I placed my thinner pieces, which I use on the ends of my braids and on the left side, I have the thicker pieces. For the braiding hair, I did end up cutting it in half because it was really long for 18 inches, so I had to stretch the hair to get rid of the blunt end. So after cutting it, I just tapered the blunt ends by holding the hair really tight and pulling at the ends. It's really easy to do. And once that's done, I brushed through the hair and also separated it so that it stretched out even more. Then I measured out the thickness I wanted each braid to be and I started sectioning out the pieces on my braiding rack. I'm going to demonstrate how I start each one a couple times and then show you guys a full braid. So once I have my box, I section my hair into three and start the braid. Sometimes I braid down once and sometimes twice. I don't know why. I'm just not consistent with my technique. But this time I did braid down once and started adding in the hair. So I added in a regular piece of braiding hair and a curly piece at the same time. And this is how I started most of my braids because I wanted my curls at the very top of the braid. But once that's added, you wanna braid down twice and add in a second piece. Always add the hair on the same side of the braid. So if you added the first piece on the left, do that for all the hair you feed in. I did feed in three pieces of braiding hair at the root and if needed, I added three more towards the middle of the braids to thicken them up. And I added about five pieces of curly hair throughout the braid and three pieces on each end. Yeah. 
So I'm going to show you guys one more time how to start the braid. So on this one, I did braid down twice before feeding in the hair. And I added the first piece in between my pointer and thumb finger. And I continue to braid down twice, add in a second piece, braid two more times, and add in the third piece. So always add your hair in threes. If you need to thicken up the braid, feed in three pieces at a time. Finally on my last braid, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do the braids in real time. I like to start by taking a piece of braiding hair that's about the thickness that I want the full braid to be, and then I'm gonna section this out into three really small pieces. As far as the curls go, I kinda just added like anywhere from five to six curls in each braid, which is a lot. If you're doing this style, it kinda depends on how many curls you want. I wanted my look to be more curly than braidy, so it is a lot of hair. If you don't like the look of that, then you can just add like two to five pieces in each braid each of my curls are about this thick um, I have my five curls that I'm gonna be adding into the braid ends of my braids I'm taking really tiny pieces and I'm only gonna use three I to keep the fuller curls towards the top and then for my ends I did use really small pieces so I'm gonna try to explain this in the best way that I can but I'm really not the best braider basically all I've been doing is sectioning the piece of my hair into three I'm just gonna start it like a normal braid I'm gonna braid down two times making sure your grip is really tight i'm going to take the first piece of braiding hair and hold it in between my pointer and my thumb so i'm going to put the braiding hair in between my pointer and middle finger this top piece is going to connect to this top piece of my real hair just grab your hair and keep braiding down you're going to braid one two then you're going to add your second piece of braiding hair in in between your pointer and middle finger and then again you're going to braid down one two and then you're going to add your final piece in and braid it down again so i braided it down like a couple times and i'm going to take my first piece of curly hair and add it in the same exact way braid down like normal but this time i'm going to do one two three four five six braid rotations and then i'm going to grab the curl and make sure it's the piece with the curly end grab it and just pull it out and pull it to the opposite side of my head i'm going to braid down a couple more times one two i add in the second curly piece the same exact way and braiding down six times one two three four five six and then you just find the curl separate it and pull it over to the side just stop right here grab some braiding gel and just kind of like slick my pieces of hair down after i slicked it down i can tell that the braid is going to be a little bit too thin at the bottom i'm going to take very small braiding pieces and just add that in the exact same way Braid down twice add in the second piece in between your pointer and middle finger braid down two more times and then I'm gonna add that third piece and braid down about three times. So y'all can see that thickens up the braid so that I'll be able to hide my ends a little bit better. I'm just gonna keep adding my curls in and braiding down six times. The reason I braid down six times is because I want my curl to be intact and I want it to stick out of the braid in a more natural way. It also places the curl directly in the middle of the braid. So after each curl, I like to braid down two to three times and then I add my other piece. So I just added in my last curl, so I'm just gonna braid down like normal. And what I have about this much braiding hair left i'm grabbing the curl like this where the shorter side is connected to my thumb and then the longer curl is by my pointer finger i hope you guys can see but when i add it into the braid the longer curl is going to be added on the top so i do the same exact method i add the curl braid down twice and then add the next curl and you want to do that until you have all three of the curls added then you just braid down like normal. I'm gonna keep braiding down until I can't see this little straight piece right here. So that is what the end looks like. And like I said, I want my ends to be pretty thin. When I first started my hair, I was adding a lot of curls to the bottom pieces, but I decided that was way too much. That's how I did it. I don't know if y'all can see it that well, but that is the braid all finished. It took me around 30 hours to do this. 
but the curls on the bottom have been in my head for about a week and there's no matting barely any shedding and all i do is put water and a few products on it every day and it hasn't tangled or anything i really love this hair this is my second time using it if you guys are looking for some good curly hair for your braids why wigs is definitely the number one now this is the final result of my hair let me know if you guys like it and yeah i'm gonna move on to my next diy self maintenance thing I'm gonna make a sugar wax and I've been waxing myself for so long, I think since I was 19 or 20, and I've always used the same tutorial, so I'll be sure to link it, so please watch that if you're thinking about waxing yourself. But it is really easy to make, just proceed with caution because it does get really hot, so make sure you follow a good tutorial. Again, I don't consider this a tutorial, I'm just showing y'all my process, but I'm not a professional. With that being said, it's so easy to make and very cost effective, so I start by preparing the ingredients, which is one and a half cups of sugar, six tablespoons of lemon or lime juice, and six tablespoons of water. Pour those ingredients into the pot and mix it together. I cook my wax on medium. If you're new to it, definitely cook it low and slow because it burns really easy cooks so fast so once it starts to bubble i keep stirring and when it gets brown i test it out by dropping the wax into a cold bowl of water if the wax hardens immediately then it's done cooking you can also use a food thermometer to test the temperature but i don't have one so i've just been eyeballing it your wax to be pretty thick so where if you scoop it up and you let it like drip down it stays on the surface mine's not ready yet so i'm gonna give it about 10 minutes so I usually use these cloth epilating strips. I prefer these because they are more like rigid, but I'm almost out of those. So I am going to be probably using these too. These are the muslin epilating strips. It's really up to preference. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but I think my wax is ready to go. You actually apply it to the area you want to wax. You want to test it out on your wrist to make sure it's not too hot. And if it feels good, it's not too hot, then your wax is ready to go. You want to apply your wax in the opposite direction of your hair growth, and then you're going to pull in the direction of your hair growth but to see which way your hair grows you want to just go down and if your hair lays flat then your hair grows down if it doesn't then your hair grows up i went ahead and zoomed you guys in you're going to take any talc free powder and apply that because you want the area to be super dry my hair grows down so i am going to apply it upwards shaking because i was so nervous but that was such a good one that's the final product i'm gonna apply my oil you don't want to apply anything super heavy after so i don't apply deodorant or lotion or anything like that at least 24 hours after my wax so just plan out your waxes accordingly. That went pretty smooth, so I'm gonna go ahead and wax my legs now. You probably can't see it on camera, but my mustache is very grown out. I'm also going to pluck my brows because they look a mess. I use oil to do mine, so I'm going to be using my rosehip oil. I feel like it's gentle enough. And I'm just going to apply that all over my face. This is the razor I'm going to be using. I'm not really sure where I got this from. I think I got it in a pack on Amazon. It came with like three or four. And you want to use a new razor every time you shave your face. I'm just going to pull my skin really taut and then go down in an angle. I'm going to use really short, quick strokes downward. Besides my mustache area, my face really doesn't have a lot of hair. But I still like to do this because it's just satisfying and my face feels so much smoother after.
and I don't love I can break you up and you here to do it all So I'm gonna use this pomegranate hydrogel mask. It has aloe vera and hyaluronic acid just to like soothe my skin. Feels so good. So I'm gonna go lay down so it doesn't slide off my face. I'm gonna let this sit for 20 minutes and I'll be back. trying to grow my natural nails out and get them really healthy because I was doing acrylic and gel X for so long they were just very unhealthy and so I've been trying to take care of them and do my little manicures at home so I'm gonna show you guys how to do a gel manicure it's very salon quality but at a fraction of the price so I'm gonna show you guys how I do that so I tried to do the little foil method but I don't have any cotton rounds I just use my last ones so I'm just gonna use two bowls and take my acetone this is a hundred percent acetone and pour it into the bowl and I'm gonna just sit my fingers in like this and let it sit until the nail polish is soft enough to scrape off probably like 15 to 20 minutes I just finished scraping off all the polish, so I'm gonna take this cuticle remover and I'm gonna apply this to my cuticles. I'm gonna drill my nails next. This one is from Amazon. I'm gonna put it on the fine setting at the lowest speed. I'm almost finished. This is what the pink looks like. Very pretty, I love this color. I used these, it came in a pack of four. This is the shade 19 and this is 65, so I used two coats of this and one coat of this sheer pink color. Definitely leave it like this if you want to. It's very natural and pretty, but I do like to add chrome. 
I think it makes it so pretty and it just elevates it so that's what I'm gonna do but I'm just gonna put a top coat on first and then add the chrome this is a top coat I use I'm just gonna do a very thin layer on each nail very thin but you want it to be even so that the chrome sticks to it I'm gonna go ahead and cure the top coat for 60 seconds. This is the chrome that I'm using. It's just a white chrome. I got it from Amazon. I'm gonna use this little eyeshadow stick, dip it into the chrome. You don't wanna use a lot, you just need a tiny bit. All you're gonna do is swipe it back and forth like this. To make sure you're getting it all over your nails so you're just gonna go back and forth make sure you're getting it on your cuticle area and on the sides really good and it just adds a little glaze to the nail so if you want something a little different you can add this or you can just keep the pink i think the natural pink is really pretty i just like to do this for something extra Okay, once you have all your chrome, you're just going to take a clean makeup brush and dust off the excess so it's not powdery. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to cure chrome, but I do cure it for like 30 seconds just in case. And now I'm just going to set it in place with another layer of top coat. The top coat is on and I'm gonna cure it for 90 seconds. the next day I'm gonna show you guys how I do my lash extensions you want to start off with really clean lashes so I just wash my lashes with the lash soap so it's super simple it takes me like 15 minutes I'm gonna be honest they don't last as long as regular lash extensions they're pretty affordable and they come with a lot so you can use them on multiple occasions this is the brand that I'm using it's the Jimmery and I got these from Amazon I'm just gonna show you guys the tools that I'm using so I have these little tweezers also from Amazon. These came in a kit, but you can use regular tweezers. These honestly aren't my favorite. And I'm using the B&Q Bond and Seal. I haven't tried this one. I used to use a different kind. I also purchased this overnight sealer. So we're going to see if this helps them last longer. If they do, I'll let you guys know. I usually do cat eye because I think I have almond shape eyes. I'm not really sure. But I usually do something that's going to elongate them. So my lashes are clean, like I said. And you always want to start by brushing through your lashes. So the reason I wanted to try this one is because it has a very detailed applicator and i thought that would be better because i do apply my bond in sections i think it works better for me basically what i do is just hold my eye up like this and i just apply it at the very base of my lashes once you do that you're just going to take the lash and apply it underneath and then you just give it a little push to make sure it's on there taking another 16 and applying that right next to the first one and you want to make sure you're applying it to your lashes and not your skin underneath so it doesn't have to be super close to your base um you want to go a little bit above the base of your lashes but that's literally how easy it is to do it so i'm going to apply a few more 16s I'm 
I'm gonna take this one off and do a 15. I'm gonna grab a 14 next and apply that. It goes 16, 16, 16, 15, 14, and I'm gonna do, I think two 12s right here. I said I did three 16s, 115, 14, 13, 12, 12. I don't know if I love the look of it right now, but I'm just gonna stick with it because I already have them on. Um, but if you guys end up not liking anything, you can definitely take them off. Actually, I am going to take off the 12 on the inside. I'm going to put a 10. So once you have all the lashes on, you're going to take your tweezers and just squeeze them into place at the base of the lash. So once that's done, I'm going in with my seal on the other side. And again, you just want to apply it at the very base of the lashes. So I just kind of like wiggle it like this. So that is this eye done. I'm going to take my little fan and just dry them some more. Now that all my maintenance is done, I'm gonna get cute, show you guys my everyday summer makeup look that I've been doing. I'm gonna go in first with the Ilia Base Face. This is a really lightweight moisturizer, but it gives my skin a lot of glow. After that, I'm gonna go in with the Glow Recipe Dew Drops. I love using these. It makes my skin texture look so good. Perfect for my natural makeup look days. Moving forward, I'm gonna go in with the Smashbox Photo Finish. Under the drill, I'm gonna put this on the really textured areas of my face. I have really big pores on this area. Area, so I'm gonna put that there. I get acne on my forehead, but I get so much texture and like those small little bumps that really don't have anything in them. I also have really big pores around my mouth just because that's where my mustache grows. And when I shave it off, you can just see the pores even more. I'm gonna go in with the NYX brow glue and I'm gonna brush my brow hairs forward to really like soak the product in there and get it nice and sticky. And then I'm gonna brush them upwards I don't know if y'all can see it but I just have all the hairs like sticking all the way up while my eyebrows dry down a little bit I'm gonna go in with the summer Fridays sheer skin tint I have this one in the shade 7 it's honestly a little too dark for me so I like to mix it with the elf halo glow in the shade 5 which is medium slash tan For my concealer, I want it to be kind of close to my skin color. So I'm going to go in with the L Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is the shade Tan Walnut. Next, I'm going to go in with a cream blush. This is by e.l.f. It's the Camo Liquid Blush. I'm using this in the shade very well, and I love this blush. You literally only need, like, a dot, and you're good. Like, a little bit goes a long way, so be really careful with this one. Put my blush pretty much, like, in a horizontal line. Um, I'm just going to put one dot, but I'm going to be blending it towards the center.
It's gonna give you that sun-kissed tan look and it just looks so cute almost like you got sunburnt But just a little cuter. So that's the placement. I am gonna add like one more dot of the blush So I'm gonna go in with powder next and I want to keep like the really healthy glowy look to my skin so i'm gonna go in with the fit me powder in the shade 310 and i'm gonna take some of my powder puff i'm gonna keep it very very close to my eyes i don't want to cover up any of the blush i just want to keep it where i put the concealer i'm not applying a lot either because like i said i don't want to mattify this look too much I'm also gonna apply some on the center of my forehead and the center of my chin Go back in with my blush brush and just go right on top of my blush again just to make sure it didn't take away any of the pigment. Next, I'm going to highlight my face a little bit. I'm using the Smashbox Halo Palette. They have a really pretty highlight shade right here. I'm going to be using that one. I apply it all over the apples of my cheeks just so the sun can really catch the glow. You can go back in with your blush brush and make it blend better. I'm going to take the highlighter and highlight my nose with it. And I'm gonna highlight the inner corner of my eyes. I'm also gonna highlight my brow bone. I'm gonna bronze my face up with the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker. This is the shade number seven. I'm not really contouring, I'm just bronzing and bringing warmth to my skin. I'm just gonna apply it to my cheekbones. Down my neck, on my forehead and also on my eyelids. For my nose contour, I'm just gonna put it underneath the tip of my nose and above the tip of my nose. But I'm also gonna carve out the front of my brow bone. For my brows, I'm just gonna fill in underneath and just emphasize the arch and the shape of them. I'm also gonna fill in a little bit of sparseness, but I'm not gonna carve out the top at all. My lips i'm gonna take the same blush and just apply that on my hand or my finger and put that in the center of my lips and i'm gonna outline them with a brown lip liner it gives the illusion that i was eating a popsicle or like a lollipop or something i don't know very summertime very cute i'm gonna finish off with a little bit more blush just to like bring it back to life that's it that's my super simple everyday summer makeup look if you want to you can also add freckles i think that would be very cute but this is the finished makeup look i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm finally done with all my at home maintenance i'm so happy to be done it took me a long time i'm gonna go take advantage of my hair because you guys know box braids last for like 0.5 seconds but yeah that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching i love you and i will see you in the next video bye